Hey guys, even here and in this video, we have a couple of very interesting bodybuilding topics, but we'll start with this one, not necessarily a bodybuilding topic, but it has to do with a bodybuilding coach, and it's definitely the biggest topic in fitness industry right now, it is obviously about Liver King. So a couple of days ago, Liver King was exposed for not really being natural, and he was exposed by a certain, up until today, officially anonymous coach so basically this guy liver king hired a coach he gave him all this information they worked for a couple of weeks and a year and a half later this coach decided to break the confidentiality agreement and uh, share these private emails with the biggest probably the biggest fitness channel on youtube and they made a documentary basically about liver king so before we continue talking about this let me show you who it was and uh, what was the story behind all this the truth always comes out. It's only a matter of time. With the Liver King, it took one and a half years. And with me, due to all of the internet detectives out there nowadays, it only took two or three days. Yes, that was indeed my old questionnaire. And yes, I am the guy that shared those private emails with Derek for more plates, more dates, that the Liver King was indeed using performance enhancing drugs. What he wanted me to do is be his drug guy secretly. Thus, I would have been complicit in this lie at one point or another when he started claiming natural i would have dropped him as a client anyway and refunded him at that point in time if i knew what he was going to turn into i would have never sent him the questionnaire so for the last one and a half years i've been sitting on the sideline biting my lip keeping this information private watching the lie get worse and worse and worse i should have released this information months ago the first time this guy started to claim natural Publicly, if you want to know why, I broke my own moral code and went against the cardinal rule of online coaching to help expose the lies. So there you go, guys. This is the coach that exposed Liver King. There was speculation, there were rumors about him that he is the one. And that's why I started following him a couple of days ago, basically. And now he published this explanation video on his YouTube channel. If you want, you can watch the whole thing on his YouTube channel. He explains everything. Anyways, this is Vigorous Steve. This is his Instagram. He makes these kind of short videos. They are usually gear related. Uh, it's very educational. His, his his, his account, his YouTube channel as well, so you can subscribe if you want. If you aren't sure who he is, but you think you know him from somewhere, you might have seen him on this podcast with Derek from More Plates, More Dates, but obviously he shaved his head these days, so maybe that's why you can't recognize him, but yeah, this guy is very knowledgeable. I recommend uh, his channel and his Instagram account, but all that aside, we have a moral dilemma. Is it ethical for a coach to expose their client like this? Well, in his video, he explains that they actually worked only for a couple of weeks and they stopped working because of miscommunication and, as he says, a ton of red flags. So, you can barely say that it was a coach-client relationship because it didn't last very long, two, three weeks, something like that. And also, this Liver King character was created a year ago, about a year ago, and these guys worked together a year and a half ago before Brian Johnson actually became Liver King. So, in the meantime, his brand grew, his character became really big, and there was a lot of kids following this guy, believing him that he was actually natural, buying his supplements, doing things that he was doing, helped him achieve his physique. So it was a big, big lie. It was a big deception. And that's probably why this guy, Vigorous Steve, felt compelled to actually uh, expose him and break this um, cardinal code of online coaching, as he says. And I think it was the right thing to do. I only wish he had done it earlier, but at least he has done it. And I'm happy because of that, this guy, Liver King, is finally exposed. But I don't know how much will this hurt him. It will definitely make him more famous, because everybody is talking about his stopping right now. However, his followers were probably kids or beginners, newbies, naive people who don't really know too much about bodybuilding and fitness. And that's why they followed him and trusted him, believed his lie, and bought his supplements. And I think he made a lot of money out of those kind of people. And those people probably won't trust him anymore to buy his stuff. And people like myself and probably most of you watching this channel will hear for his name and he will become more popular, more famous. But I don't think people like us would buy his supplements and believe whatever he's trying to sell us.
Anyways, this is the guy that exposed him, his name, his Instagram name is Vigorous Steve. Make sure to check out his channel and his Instagram account and tell me down below in the comment section whether you agree or you disagree with what I said about him uh, exposing this guy. Was it morally, was it ethically correct thing to do? Alright, the next thing I wanted to talk about was Wesley Vissers and take a look at this physique update. I mean, this looks phenomenal, this looks amazing, but yeah, he has a lot of flaws, like he's not super complete, like some of the top Olympia classic physique guys, and that's why he doesn't necessarily always do so well, and he never really brought crazy level of conditioning like that of Chris Bumstead, Terence Ruffin, Urs Kalecinski, Brian Ainsley and the others. He always comes in a little bit smooth, a little bit soft, he never really brought that crazy conditioning. And so basically the reason why he doesn't do, let's say, as well as we would hope he does is the lack of detail. Not just as far as conditioning, but I think also development, but mainly conditioning. I think if he brings crazy conditioning, and he looks crazy conditioned for two weeks out, if he comes, if he actually keeps working on it, and he doesn't lose his shape, his size, and comes in peeled, if he does that, if he comes in dry... He can be as high as, I don't know, I can see it in top, I can see top 6, top 5, top 6, I can see that. I know how, how hard it is out of 50 guys to be 5th, but I don't know, I just love his physique and this year, like every other year so far, he has made a ton of progress, so at the British Grand Prix, actually sorry, uh, Arnold Classic UK, he was, he looked amazing, he looked improved, everything was just better, especially his back and his back poses, but he wasn't as conditioned, however, at France, Yamamoto Pro Show, he improved his conditioning a little bit, he tightened up, and he won that show, and he beat the guy that beat him at the British, again, at the Arnold Classic UK, so that's why I have high hopes for Wesley Vissers, I believe, as long as he brings good conditioning, or if he brings the best conditioning of his life to that Mr. Olympia stage, he can do really well. I think he's that good, actually. Yeah, I know he has some structural flaws as well, like a little bit blockier waistline, and maybe not the most flaring and the, and the best shaped quads. There are flaws. No, he's not perfect, but who is perfect? Everybody pretty much has flaws. I think it's gonna be all about how conditioned he comes, how well he peaks, and if he does that well... Again, he can be as high as top 6, top 5, that's my prediction, that's where I see him. If you guys feel different, if you think otherwise, if you think he's not that good, whatever you think, whatever you think he can place in this Mr. Olympia lineup, tell me down below in the comment section. Do you think he can be, uh, let's say if he's 100% on, can he be top 5, top 6, or do you think he's gonna be top 10 or out of top 10, top 20? I mean, there are 50 good guys in that show, so anything is possible, really. He can easily be overlooked, or a bunch of really good guys better than him can be overlooked and he can surpass them. Whatever your thoughts are, guys, tell me down below in the comment section. I thought that was a good question where Wesley is gonna place, because it's really hard to tell, but I think even better question is where will this former classic physique Mr. Olympia, Brion Ainsley, place? And this is his most recent physique update. At 10 days out, this is what he looks like, and he is shredded. You can definitely say that he's shredded. He's showing a crazy Christmas tree, crazy details in his lats, in his uh, his glutes are peeled. Uh, everything is just very, very lean. Like he is definitely in shape, as he always is. And what he is doing right here is he's hiding his biggest weakness, his biggest flaw nowadays, and that is his left leg. His left quad has atrophied significantly. And yes, there are ways to hide that on your Instagram when you're doing poses like this. As you can see, he's not really showing that leg, and it's from behind, you can't really see the quad. But he can't always take photos in those weird angles. Here is a transparent photo in which you can see that one of his legs is significantly smaller than the other. And some of you might think it's only an angle, it's only a different angle, maybe he's just... Uh, not flexing that leg, he put his other leg forward a little bit, it looks like it, but no, look at this photo. Same angle, same lighting, same spot, and when he's not doing that thing with his one leg forward, when he's not twisting his body, you can see the imbalance is quite obvious, as you can see one of his legs is significantly smaller, and it was really obvious in this off-season photo. I remember seeing this, and I made a video about it back then, 
I was like, wow, what happened to his leg? And he's kind of keeping this a secret. He's not really telling us what is happening to his leg. And I guess there are fans of his, his followers that don't really follow bodybuilding too much. They are not hardcore bodybuilding fans like you guys. And, and they won't be able to notice this unless he tells them to. So he doesn't want to explain what is happening to his leg. Uh, on stage, he can't hide that. The judges can see what is happening. And that's why his placement is hurting so much. He went from being a classic physique Mr. Olympia champion two years in a row to placing fourth at the Arnold Classic. So that tells you uh, where Brian Ainsley stands today. And at this year's Mr. Olympia, I don't think he's going to be any improved, any, any better than he was at the Arnold Classic. However, I think he's going to be worse because... He's an older guy, he's like 40, in his mid-40s right, right now, so I don't expect him to improve, I don't expect him to, to fix this flaw, I expect it to get even worse, uh, with age it's only going to get worse, so where will he place this year, can he remain in that top 5, I mean he was beaten by Chris Bumpster, Terrence Serafin, Ramon Dino and Urs, so officially right now he's about 5th, but there is a whole bunch of great classic physique guys like Wesley Vissers, like Gabriel Zancinelli, like uh, Fabian Classy FM, so many other great classic physique guys that are most likely going to take over uh, Brian Ainsley, beat him at the Mr. Olympia, and me personally, I don't see Brian Ainsley placing higher than top 7, top 8 this year. Whatever you guys think though, tell me down below in the comment section. As you guys have already probably heard, Aaron Singerman, the CEO and the owner of Redcon 1, was released from prison. He was supposed to be in there for a couple of years, but for some reason he was released much, much earlier. John Romano on RX Muscle had an interesting theory as for why they let him go so fast. And what he said is that there is no way uh, they would let him leave without him ratting on somebody. I don't know how true is that. That's just what John Romano said on RX Muscle podcast. Check it out, guys, if you want. Anyways, I hope that's not the case. And I am happy that Aaron is finally out because he was really helping a, the bodybuilding industry. A Redcon 1 was doing a lot of great things promoting bodybuilding. And lately, I mean, ever since he went to prison, it collapsed. That company is no longer what it was uh, once and I hope he's going to get it back to where it was before. Can he do that? I don't know. I hope so. In this video, I'm going to show you his first video uh, since he got out of prison. Let me show you this video that he made. So I'm fully back. I'm actually back at the office. I just want to say thank you to all of you guys who shared and liked and, and commented on my post about being back. Thank you so much. I mean, it, uh, it makes me feel really good, uh, really good to be back. And really good to be uh, to be even doing this. this is my first selfie or selfie video or anything selfie in a year how do you like that so aaron singerman is back he's free again however his uh, partner in crime pj braun is not yet released why is that go figure Whatever you guys think about this whole situation, let me know down below in the comment section. Like this video if you enjoyed it, guys. And for more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.